Rugby is a physical game where both speed and size is essential to success. Unfortunately, these two characteristics are not commonly exhibited together. In our research, we found some calculus behind how bigger, slower defensive players can effectively catch and tackle the speedy offensive players. We also found some calculus to support strategies offensive players can utilize in order to avoid being tackled and to score more points. First, let us introduce our two players. First is Andrew, aka Einstein. He weighs 77.4 kilograms, runs at an average speed of 7.4 meters per second, and has a height of 181.6 centimeters. Next is Taylor, aka Coach. He weighs 100 kilograms, runs at an average speed of 6.9 meters per second, and has a height of 190.5 centimeters. Now that that's over, let us get into how this relates to calculus. Assume Taylor and Andrew start at the same point. Our offensive player, Andrew, gets the ball and begins running on an irregular pattern in order to avoid defensemen. In order to tackle the speedier Andrew, Taylor must predict Andrew's later position downfield. For simplicity's sake, let us set up a situation where Andrew runs a triangular pattern from the original point 00, .00 to the point 0, 010 and then to the point 1010. 10. Using his average speed of 7.4 meters per second, he can get there in 2.7 seconds. In order for Taylor to meet Andrew at this point, he must only run at a speed of 3.7 meters per second, conserving energy for later in the game as it is just over half of his top speed. Next we are going to talk about mirroring. This is when the defensive player mimics the offensive player's movements as if they were their mirror image. Suppose Andrew and Taylor are 16 meters apart. Let us draw a perpendicular line exactly halfway between them. In order to determine how long it will take for Taylor to tackle Andrew, we will use the equation T equals R divided by big V. T equaling time, R equaling Taylor's position from our perpendicular line, and big V equaling Taylor's speed. Plugging in the numbers, we find that the tackle will occur after 1.16 seconds. Next, to determine how far along our perpendicular line the tackle occurs, we use the formula D equals little v times t, where little v equals Andrew's speed, and t is the 1.16 seconds we just found. When we solve, we find that Taylor will tackle Andrew 8.58 meters along this perpendicular line. Now we're going to switch gears and talk about avoiding tackles. In order to avoid being tackled, you must be half of your width plus the distance the defensive player can dive away from your opponent. Let us put this to practical use. Half of Taylor's width is 23.5 centimeters. Mitch and Andrew both can dive an identical distance of 227.32 centimeters. Therefore, to avoid being tackled, Taylor must stay 250.82 centimeters away from both Mitch and Andrew. We are looking at the area of the field between the end of the field and the 22 meter line. If all the members of the opposing team are evenly dispersed throughout the entire 100 by 69 meter field, only three of them would be in our described section. In this situation, there are 0.0022 defensive players per square meter on the field. In order to figure out how far one can travel before being tackled, we use the equation 1 divided by n times 2r plus w, where n is the amount of defensive players per square meter, r is the distance defenders can dive, and w is the offensive player's width. Using the numbers we had in our previous example, we find that Taylor can travel an average of 1.66 meters before being tackled. It's less crowded! <laughs> However, if all 15 opposing players are between the end line and the 22 meter line, we now have an end value of 0.1 defenders per square meter. Therefore, Taylor can only travel an average of 0.36 meters before being tackled. <laughs> Next, let us look at the combined speed of a head-on tackle. In this example, we are using the smaller, speedier Andrew as our defensive tackler. 
The combined speed of this head-on collision can be described by the equation Taylor's mass times velocity plus Andrew's mass times velocity divided by Taylor's mass plus Andrew's mass. When we plug in the numbers, we see that after the collision, the pair is traveling at 0.66 meters per second in the direction that Taylor was originally traveling. Although this head-on collision does not necessarily bring down Taylor, reducing his speed to 0.66 meters per second allows Andrew's teammates to come in and help make the tackle. Not all tackles occur head-on though, particularly when defending close to the sideline, it is beneficial to tackle your opponent out of bounds so that your team regains possession of the ball. The best way to do this is by tackling them at an angle. To determine the velocity towards the sideline of such a tackle, we can use the equation Andrew's mass times Andrew's velocity times cosine A divided by Taylor's mass plus Andrew's mass. The angle A is the angle Andrew makes with the sideline. If A is equal to 45 degrees, this means that the velocity of the tackle towards the sideline is 2.28 meters per second. Once tackled, you are allowed one move to present the ball towards your team. The longer you take to fall, the better because you have more time to make this move. The formula to determine how long you have before you fall is T equals the square root of 2h squared divided by v squared plus 2gh, where h is your height, v is your velocity, and g is a gravitational acceleration, which is a constant of 9.8 meters per second per second. Working this out, we found that it takes 4.38 seconds for Taylor to fall, where it only takes 4.27 seconds for Andrew to fall showing that it is beneficial to be taller in the sport of rugby. Armed with this knowledge, you're now ready to hit the pitch, avoid the defense, and score some tries.